Now, this is how I'll be going through my presentation. I'll be introducing you to the concept of the respiratory physiology. I'll be discussing the structure of lung units in brief. Some concepts about ventilation and diffusion of gases, ventilation perfusion matching and their mismatching, how is oxygen transported, and I'll be summarizing my entire presentation. Now, to begin with, we have got a pair of lungs in our body. Now, lungs basically serve two purposes. You have the primary function and the secondary function, of which the primary function is the most important. That is, it allows oxygen from the air to move into the venous blood and carbon dioxide to move out of the venous blood into the air. This is called the gas exchange. Apart from that, the lung also fulfills a variety of secondary functions like metabolism of certain products and hormones, filtrations of harmful bacteria and dust particles, and it also acts as a reservoir of blood, that is the entire cardiac output comes into the lung. So thereby it acts as a reservoir of blood in emergency purposes. Now gas movement into the lungs and from there into the tissues basically follows the fixed law of diffusion. Now fixed law of diffusion, I'll be coming to that later, but let me give you an introduction. Fixed law of diffusion states that the amount of gas which diffuses across any surface. In the lungs, it is the membrane, that is the alveolar membrane. So, the amount of gas diffusing across the membrane is proportional to the area of the surface, that is surface area of the membrane and is inversely proportional to the thickness of the membrane. So, anything which increases the thickness or decreases the surface area decreases the diffusion of gases from the alveoli into the capillaries, that is from the alveoli into the blood. So when we talk about the lung, we not only include the airways, but the blood vessels as well. So the airways and the blood vessels surrounding the alveoli and in the lungs comprise what is known as the lung unit. So this is the tracheobronchial tree, the anatomy. Let me begin with the anatomy. You have the larynx, which then goes to the trachea. The trachea divides into the right main bronchus, the left main bronchus. The left main bronchus and the right main bronchus in turn divide into the lobar. Then you have the segmental and then the subsegmental bronchus. And this process continues down to the terminal bronchioles. The terminal bronchioles serve as the last point of those part of the airways which are without the alveoli. And they constitute what is called as the conducting airways. That is from the trachea to the terminal bronchioles, you have the conducting airways and they are devoid of alveoli. That is the gas exchange does not take place here. They just lead the inspired air from the atmosphere to the gas exchanging units which are distal to the terminal bronchioles, that is the alveoli. They are rich in cartilage, that is the conducting airways are rich in cartilage. That's why in cases of bronchospasm, these are the portions of the respiratory tract which constrict and they are with the paucity of smooth muscle. So they constitute the anatomical dead space, that is they are called anatomical dead space since no gas exchange occurs here. The main purpose of the anatomical dead space, that is from the trachea to the terminal bronchioles, also called the conducting airways, is to lead the inspired air from the atmosphere to the gas exchanging 